Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the uh, official Floodlight 2 product reveal live event. Uh, I know that you guys have been seeing, you know, pictures on the website and on social media, uh, but we're going to hopefully answer all of your questions today and do a little bit of show and tell about the new product. Uh, thank you all very much for tuning in. We have been working on this for ages and we are so excited to finally show you this it's been a work in progress for <clears throat> a very long time and we've packed it with all kinds of cool features and we uh we're super excited to show you uh we're gonna get to that very quickly i have some notes so i don't get lost in my own thoughts here um Oh, wow, we got a lot of comments coming in. Um, hello, everyone. This is exciting already. Um, so I'm going to get through a few things here while people join the stream, and then we'll get into the meat and potatoes of this. Okay, so we, you know, dedicated and committed concealed carriers and our professional clients spend a lot of time with the pistol in really close physically intimate contact with our bodies. And it has always perplexed me how little the shape of a holster has to do with the shape of the body. As far as concealment products go and concealment technology, we should be endeavored in the process of uh, making holsters human. So back in the middle of the previous decade, in 2015, 2016, uh, we started experimenting with forming organic shapes uh, into our holsters. And our first experiment was the Filster Classic with the teardrop wedge molded in. And as our process and our thinking evolved, uh, we transitioned to the uh, Pro Holster, which has a wider and rounder shape molded in, and it's on, on both sides. And we've paid a lot of close attention to how the bottom edges of this interact with the body. And one of the things that we learned in between these two things was the more specific the shape that's molded into the holster is, the smaller the cross-section of people that it will fit. So we're thinking about generally blending organic shapes into these holsters over time. Now, <clears throat> the next step, of course, was the Enigma system. Uh, which gives users complete freedom to position the pistol anywhere on their body that's most ergonomically optimal for them, uh, regardless of what kind of clothing they're wearing and what constraints the clothing might put on them otherwise. And then, of course, you can combine these products with our uh, um, new holster wedge kit, which works fantastic, and add to that our uh, industry-leading educational resources. And with all these things combined, it has never been easier in the history of concealed carry for the millions of new carriers to achieve or even exceed the same level of comfort and concealment results, which took us uh, years to accomplish largely through trial and error. And we're doing this all without a single performance or safety compromise. So the process of making holsters human. We're doing this not just by giving people the ability to easily and quickly fine tune their gun to their body, but also by seamlessly integrating a gun into their life without having to change who they are or how they dress or how they present themselves to the world or change any of the activities that they're engaged in. And by, you know, giving our uh, professional end users the highest quality and most efficient tools possible so they can focus on their work instead of their gear. And at every step of the process, of making holsters human, it's presented us with some kind of milestone technical challenge to overcome. And that technical challenge spawns a, a new innovation. The Floodlight 2 has been our most significant technical challenge to date. And that means it comes with a really cool innovation. So you see, the, the main reason that these holsters aren't shaped like bodies is because 
when you're manufacturing them out of something traditional like leather or kydex, you're starting with a flat sheet of material, which you then heat up, in the case of kydex, or, or wet in the case of leather, and mold it around a positive shape. And that means that you're going to wind up with a uh, final product that is the same on the outside as it is on the inside. So, you know, anywhere that we mold in a wedge into the holster, there's going to be a void on the inside. This is filled with nothing. It's just space that doesn't contact the gun, which means that after you can only go so far away from the shape of the gun before the holster stops functioning. There are critical parts of the gun that the material has to touch in order for the gun to fit and not just be a, a bucket, right? Starting with a sheet of material constitutes a major limitation in how far away we can get from the shape of the gun and how close we can get to the shape of a body. Now, here, let me grab a, uh, an old model here. Now, in the case of the floodlight, all of the uh, critical fit is around the light. Um, so everywhere that we want to put or an organic shape is going to interfere with how we contact the light and get retention on, on the inside of the floodlight. We can't move away from these shapes at all with this process and still have any retention. So, when it came to thinking about where we want to take holsters and what our vision is for the, for the future of these products, we couldn't just think outside of the box. We had to start thinking outside of the sheet. The future holsters that we want to be making, starting now, are just not possible to produce with a sheet of material. Now, what we could have done is we could have easily gone and made a cool new non-light bearing holster. Uh, and avoided a lot of the challenges that we had with this project. But the technical challenge of applying this strategy to a design that's as particular as the floodlight was so significant that we thought, if we can do this with the floodlight, we can do it with anything. So we're going to take the biggest challenge first and then work down from there. And then on top of that, our floodlight end users are among the most demanding and dedicated gun carriers in the world. Uh, so they're not going to be easy to impress. And then on top of that, they're really overdue for a product update. So with that being said, I am super excited to get into how we solved all this and show you what we've been working on. That's the video. We have been dying to show you guys this for, for ages. Uh, so the Floodlight 2 is our first holster to feature our patent pending new Comfortscape technology, which you got a glimpse of in the video. And that's the innovation which makes this holster possible. So let's take a look at the uh, overhead here. Uh, the Comfortscape organic ribs across the face of the holster smooth out all of the shapes and corners and bumps and make the holster feel like one continuous surface when you're wearing it. And the entire holster is no thicker than the original. The thickest part of the holster being, you know, where the screws, uh, where the clips mount on either the front or the, or the back, depending on whether or not you're light, uh, right or left-handed, that thickest dimension is unchanged. And we've actually gone and we've reduced 
the profile a little bit. It's slightly more narrow. We've trimmed off uh, a little bit of excess where we have seen people uh, generally modifying their floodlights. And we've also addressed all the radiuses that usually poke you in the leg or or, or in your uh, lower abdomen when you're, when you're wearing a floodlight. Now, uh, Comfortscape improves concealment and comfort. It does concealment in two ways. So you'll see down here around the uh, light bezel at the bottom of the holster, the ribs themselves are a little taller than the light. So when you're wearing this, this keeps the, uh, the light from tilting inward and poking you in the leg. So it gives you a little bit of standoff there and keeps the whole thing upright so you don't get the corner of the holster driving into your leg. Um, and then on top of it, it's rounded instead of flat like the old version. And given that it's rounded, it tends to want to tuck into the body a little bit more. So now when you tighten down your belt on the wing, you've got kind of like a broad, generalized, built-in, subtle wedge on the entire surface of the holster. And it manages to conceal substantially better than the original floodlight while also being uh, more comfortable. So the other cool thing is that the manufacturing process that allows us to make the inside and the outside of the holster different uh, means that we can actually improve some of the critical internal fit features here. So we, the holster isn't just full of voids. We've gone and backfilled a lot of these ribs in here with uh, smaller ribs on the inside to ensure that we maintain all of the critical fit uh, on the light and where it's the uh, rest of the holster is going to contact the gun. And we're able to much more accurately and consistently mold in all of the little shapes and dimples that uh, t are all the touch points for the pistol and the light on the inside. So we're able to make this different on the outside than it is on the inside and improve the retention characteristics of the holster as well. So we've done it again. We've made another totally weird looking product. Um, I should hope that that's what you're all used to from us by now. We make really weird stuff um, and we're here for it. Uh, but there's always a reason why it's weird. So a couple of obvious questions, of course, leap into mind. If we're talking about smoothing out the outside of the holster, why don't we just make the whole thing smooth? Well, comfort comes from a number of var variables and uh, smoothness is just one of them. The condition of your skin plays a significant role in the skin comfort that you experience. So all of us, especially the people who are, you know, our floodlight end users have uh, spent all day on the range or all day at a class or have worn their gun for 12 or 15 or 18 hours a day. And at the end of the day, you take it off and your holster is covered in sweat and your skin is irritated and it gets more and more uncomfortable throughout the day. Actually, um, my good friend Annette put me onto this a number of years ago. We were... Uh, on our way from Philadelphia to Virginia to take a class and then drive back the same day. And we're getting in the car and she's like, did you bring a pair of socks and an extra t-shirt? I'm like, why? It's not going to rain. What's going on? And she's like, no, at the end of the day, change your socks and your t-shirt. I guarantee you'll, you'll feel better. And I followed her lead. And at the end of the day, I took off my sweaty socks and I put on my clean, dry socks and I felt fresh as a daisy and it was spectacular. And my feet felt better. When you are stifling the skin, any friction and any pressure point makes that feel worse than it would otherwise. So when you're stifling the skin, your skin condition degrades and your skin becomes more sensitive. So the existing friction and the existing pressure points do more damage the sweatier you get. Instead of just blanketly making this whole holster smooth, what we did is we went back and we cut ribs into that shape. And what that does is that gives the sweat somewhere to go. It doesn't just cake on the back of the holster. It, there's places for it to evacuate out through the ribs. And then on top of it, it gives you a little bit of standoff between the holster and the body in such a way that you get a little bit more airflow, which means that by the end of the day, you'll notice way less discomfort from carrying a gun than you would have with a, a different kind of holster. So we've got improved 
comfort, and we've got improved concealment. The other thing that we and our end users have always loved about the floodlight is that it's future-proof. So you can change guns and keep up with the latest pistols from your favorite manufacturers without constantly having to buy new holsters. And we're really excited to be able to increase the service life of this kind of premium long-term gear investment. Uh, our new manufacturing process allows us to take advantage of really superior materials. We're using a blend of plastics, which is in the same family as your favorite and most durable uh, rifle stocks, rifle grips, pistol frames, and uh, polymer magazines. And we've added just enough flexibility into this to mitigate the kind of like common uh, uh, holster stress fractures that come with you know wearing a, a piece of equipment for a, a long period of time. So the better material plus the structural strength that we get from having you know uh, east west ribs on the inside and north south ribs on the uh, on on the outside and north south on the inside means that we have uh, made what's probably our most durable and robust holster ever. So now we've got better comfort, better concealment, better materials and longevity, but we didn't stop there. Every Floodlight 2 ships standard with a pair of DCC Mod 4 inch and a half clips. The industry leading belt attachment clip with the lowest profile best gripping strength, and most durability on the market. They're not an optional upgrade anymore. They come pre-installed on the Floodlight 2. And the Floodlight 2 with standard DCC clips costs less, pardon me, than the old Floodlight 1 plus optional DCC clips. So I think the Floodlight 1 plus the DCC kit wound up costing somewhere north of $160. And the basic Floodlight 2 with DCC clips pre-installed comes in at $138. And it all gets better than that too. So we haven't, we're not even done yet. So better parts, better materials, better comfort, better longevity. We've also got better colors. You'll notice the conspicuous absence of black for the first time ever, in case it doesn't show up on camera. Uh, this is black, this is charcoal. So we've lightened it up a little bit because I think that looks really cool. And since we're not stuck with off-the-shelf Kydex colors, we could get really particular about what we wanted out of this. So we've got charcoal, tundra, earth, and sage. These two look way better than the uh, off-the-shelf kind of um, Kydex colors that were available to us. And then additionally, we're finally able to do these in white. Now, there's a little bit of a complicated backstory there. Anyone who works with Kydex will tell you that the lighter colors are softer. The, uh, when you're like buffing and sanding and cutting them, it's easy to subtract too much material. Uh, anyone who's using a lighter colored uh, uh, Kydex holster will notice how much of that lighter color uh, rubs off onto the finish of, of their gun or the slide of their gun. Um, since these are all exactly the same material that uh, the color of which depends on a color concentrate, nothing uh, else in the process, they're an engi engineering grade of material that means that whatever color they are, they may maintain all the same material properties. So the lighter colors are just as tough as the darker colors, which is not something the case uh, in Kydex and Bolteron. I love, the white's my favorite color. Not only does it look incredibly cool, but one of the things that I like about it the most, and floodlight users are gonna appreciate this because they're the people who dry fire constantly and take a ton of classes. When you're looking your gun back into the holster, being able to see inside the holster and inside of a bright colored holster is really great insurance to make sure that you're not uh, putting your gun in a holster that's already got like your shirt or part of your jacket in it. So, better colors, better materials, better parts, better comfort, better concealment. I think that checks uh, most of the boxes. I think that's enough boxes to check for, for a new product release. Like if you're gonna 
take a long time to develop a new product. It better do all of those things. And I think we, uh, I think we did it pretty well. Um, let's take a look at the notes, make sure I'm doing it all right. Um, other things, a lot of you already have a Floodlight 1 and you bought DCC clips for it. Or a lot of you already have a light bearing Enigma that you put your floodlight on. Are we gonna make you buy a whole new holster with DCC clips already on it? No. If you've already got, you know, a pile of extra holster parts or DCC clips on an old holster that you're gonna take off, or you wanna put this uh, new holster on a light bearing Enigma you already have, on the website, there's going to be an option to select bare shell, which means that you're going to get a complete holster with the wing and all the hardware and the shock cord fully assembled, all the hardware for clips, but with no clips. So you can save a few bucks. We are thinking of you. We know that a lot of you buy a lot of gear. Floodlight users buy a lot of gear. You're buying lights, you're buying holsters, you're buying stuff for your gun. We want to make sure that there is a little bit of relief that we can give you when it comes time to, uh, uh, buy this product. And if that's not enough, at the time of launch, the new light bearing Enigma Express is going to be available. We took our light bearing Enigma and we redesigned it to fit nothing, uh, redesigned it around exclusively the uh, Floodlight 2, made its own faceplate for it. So now when you go shopping for an Enigma Express, a fully assembled, simplified, uh, Enigma system, you can get it with any one of these color choices of floodlight for X300 or TLR1 already attached, in right or left-handed. So those are going to be available starting uh, Monday as well. So we have two new products in four colors that are all better materials with better parts and are more comfortable and are more concealable. So <sighs> Woof. Is that enough? <laughs> Did we do it? Did we do a good job, guys? I think so. I'm pretty proud of this. Um, All right. I, um, I'm going to roll the launch video one more time, and then we can get to some questions. All right, we're back. Let's do some questions. Then I've got a couple more things that I want to talk about real quick. All right. Hit me with a question. Are we going to see a PL350 version? Okay, so uh, we are going to continue to produce the Floodlight 1 for the PL350. You'll be able to get the um, Legacy Floodlight, and you'll also be able to get the OWB Floodlight for the PL350 version. Um, this is a good opportunity to talk about this. Let's hit the overhead real quick here. You see these prototypes? We started these in 2020. These were like the original uh, proof of concept for whether or not we could start to affect the outside of the holster without changing anything about the inside. This was a multi-year process that cost a pretty insane amount of money. With that being said, at this time, the PL350 Floodlight 1 didn't move enough units that we could justify working it into this program at the moment. Now, of course, you know, Mod Light's uh, market penetration is always increasing. We're going to continue to support them and that product with the uh, 
original floodlight. However, the uh, the cost benefit on what it takes to get this done, we there's a pretty significant chance that we wouldn't recoup that if we made a uh, PL350 floodlight 2 at this moment. But that could change. There's just no plan for it right this second. Um, another thing is, <clears throat> you TLR1 users are going to notice something a little bit different. So, you see the previous TLR1 floodlight. Some folks buy the TLR1 because it's shorter. Hey, can I get the overhead shot? Thanks. Um, because it's shorter than the X300, right? It's got a shorter bezel and that appeals to some folks. And in the original uh, floodlight, we just cropped the holster right there. Now, when we were playing around with how we're gonna radius this edge and make it way more body friendly, we wound up actually extending the X300 ever so slightly. So it's a little bit longer than the bezel on the X300. However, the shape and the size of it made it so much more comfortable that during this process, we said, hey, let's 3D print ourselves up a uh, version of the TLR1 floodlight that's shaped exactly that same way and see if there's a trade-off between the sharp angle cut off here at the bezel of the light and the sh uh, better shapes that we get out of this version. So you will notice when you get yours that there's a little bit of extra length on the TLR1 version. However, it is so dramatically more comfortable. Not only do you get a little bit of extra keel, but you don't have a sharp corner poking you in your body anymore. And we've included a couple little uh, retention stops on the inside of the holster shell so that the uh, light doesn't over insert. And I know it's a lot to ask because people, you know, are convinced of, 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 of certain things, but I am positive that if you trust us on this, you will find that the new one is way more comfortable than the previous one, even if it is slightly longer. We wouldn't have committed all of these resources on, on a gamble and a hope. We've determined that it was more comfortable by wearing it and testing it. And we took a little bit of a chance because I know that people look at things and they make an opinion before they try it. However, we had a lot of things to try and make opinions about before we even started cutting the molds for these. So come along with us on this just a little bit and, and don't get uh, too caught up on a, any preconceptions you might have here. But you're all Filster customers, so you don't do that anyway. Okay, you ready for the next question? Yeah. All right, uh, let's see here. Can someone confirm if the Floodlight 2 will be compatible with the M9A3? Yeah, the last one was, this one is too. We ran it through the entire safe of guns that we have access to. Same fit list as the previous model. All right, next up, uh, will the sport belt be included with the light bearing Enigma Express? The sport belt is an option that you can select or deselect at time of purchase. We do not pre-install the sport belt for you like the um, uh, Enigma Express uh, that you can get for uh, small pistols. Um, you select the Enigma Express that fits your gun and the sport belt which fits your body, and when they arrive, you assemble them together. All right, next up, do the DCC clips also come with the Enigma Express bundle? They do not. Okay, that was quick. <laughs> All right, uh, is the Floodlight 2 compatible with the existing light-bearing Enigma? Yes. Or is it only with the new Express? It is compatible with the existing light bearing Enigma. So if you already have a light bearing Enigma and you want a new floodlight for it, you can get the new floodlight with the bare shell option, not pay extra for DCC clips that you don't need, and attach it directly to your light bearing Enigma. Or if you want to have the option to take it off and use it on a belt, you buy the uh, floodlight too, uh, not as a bare shell, with the DCC clips, and you can keep those clips and put them in a drawer full of gun stuff and put them back on the holster whenever you want. All right, next up, will there be other attachment options besides DCC clips? Uh, <clears throat> <sighs> no. 
maybe. Um, it's going to be clips only if, if there are any other options. So one of the things... Yeah, from us. But I mean, you can put your own yeah, clips on it. You can put your own clips on it. So one of the things... One of the things that delayed the launch of this was that DCC is moving their factory, which meant that our supply of, you know, our shells were done right when they started moving their factory, so we couldn't get enough clips. So we were receiving what they could produce for us and stockpiling them over a period of time. Um, if anything happens that uh, would jeopardize the availability of Floodlight 2 holsters to you guys, uh, we have in our back pocket an additional um, metal spring steel clip option, which we could deploy uh, and make these holsters available with a other brand of clip. But we're really only planning on doing that if we can't get enough DCC clips to keep you guys happy. And next question, can you show the adjustability of the DCC clips, like for ride height and cant? Uh, yeah, so we use the... So you can see that on the, on the shell itself, there are three holes. You only need, the, the DCC clips themselves only have two holes. So you can move them up and down in these slots on the holster to adjust the ride height. But the other thing that you can do is we use the DCC clips that have slots in them so you can adjust them. You can do uh, micro adjustments within whichever two holes you select. There's not a lot of cant adjustment here. These are pretty much vertical. Um, but uh, you can adjust the ride height. All right, next question. Can I do a front flip while sledding like I did today with the OG Light Bearing Enigma and have no issues? Oh, yeah, the retention's even better than the last one. All right, let me, let, me, uh, let me dial it in real quick. Go ahead. Who's got more questions? Okay, so while he's working on that, let's find the next one here. Sorry, I'm trying to keep up. I'm kind of a one-man band back here trying to keep the stream going and read all the questions. Uh, where are we? Sorry, we're using fake guns for the stream, so we, our stream doesn't get pulled down by, you know, hysterical, sensor, censorious Silicon Valley people. All right, so let's see here. Okay, so next question. Uh, if you want to take the floodlight off the Enigma, can you just put DCC clips on and run it with a belt? So can you um, yes, use if you it get all the hard if you get all the correct hardware for it? Yeah. Yep. All righty. And next up, um, there's a question about the old versus new floodlight, but I'm going to save that because there's a couple here that are kind of related um, that we can knock out real quick. Okay. All right. Um, so. If people buy the Enigma with the new floodlight, can you put the old, can you switch the old floodlight on the new uh, light bearing Enigma Express? Can you put the old floodlight on the new Enigma Express? Is that the question? I think that's the question. If yeah, I buy the Enigma the with the new floodlight, could I switch it out to my old floodlight? Um, I don't understand that question. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that you would really need to. Um, I mean, I guess if they want to switch these things back and forth. Yeah, I, I don't know if they want to just use the the new floodlight on a belt, but I don't know. Okay, well, let's let's go to a question we can answer. Okay. All right. What's the reasoning for removing the top mounting holes? Can you still add ulti clips or DCC to the Express to get rid of the leg leash? Um. Okay. So. I think one of the one of the re there's a few reasons that we don't have soft loops available on this anymore. One was that we wanted to keep the top half of this holster a little bit more slick. Those would be, you know, the 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 bosses that keep the you know the dimples that keep the screws from touching the gun would wind up being taller, and we wanted to slim this whole thing down and make make it way more organic. And looking at it, we thought those might have to go. 
And then the other thing is that more than half of, almost everyone takes the soft loops off of their floodlight and puts clips on. Of the people who keep their soft loops, most of them don't even adjust them to fit their belt and uh, get the most out of what the loops have to offer because they're adjustable. Most people just uh, put them on. Uh, and then on top of it, there's no reason to include something that most users take off and replace with a clip. And when we're looking at the value proposition of we could either include by default the uh, best, strongest, most proven, lowest profile belt attachment hardware available anywhere at the same or lower price than we were making it available before, or we could add some extra parts to this holster that people are going to take off and keep the price high. It's sort of like um, one day you woke up and all the laptops you could buy all had like a terabyte SSD drive in them. And in order to do that, they had to get rid of the CD drive that nobody used anymore. That's kind of the, the step we took here. The soft loops, I think, have kind of like had their day. And as we start to put out new products in the future, those are going to phase out the same way that like CD drives and floppy drives phased out. All right, next question. Will this work with the original Lightbearing Enigma faceplate? Yes. Okay. That's a nice, easy one. All right. Um, next question here from Rick is, have any changes been made to the leg leash system for the, uh, for the new Lightbearing Enigma Express? Well, <clears throat> the leash is the same. Uh, However, we've changed where it attaches because since it doesn't have to accommodate any other design other than this one, uh, we're able to uh, truncate it up to uh, a little bit closer to the mounting point so it doesn't hang past the edge. Yeah, and if you're curious about the, uh, the leg leash material itself, um, that is the same material. Um, if you don't like the material, it's super easy to switch it out for gutted paracord. It takes like five minutes. Um, that material is going to stay the same until we find something better that we can get in sufficient quantities. So that's kind of the, the stopping point for that. Um, we've contacted a few people like, hey, can we get this or that that we think might work better? And, and uh, <laughs> we've had a couple of them like literally laugh in our face when they're like, you need how much? So we're in this kind of weird gray area between... Uh, we're, we need much more than hobby quantities of materials, but not like industrial quantities. Um, so as soon as we find something better, we'll change it. Um, until then, change it yourself. Super easy. There's a tutorial on the website. All right, so here's a good one, John. Um, were any steps taken to shrink the gap between the trigger guard uh, of the TLR1? Some people have said that they can put a finger in the trigger guard. That depends entirely on the gun that you're putting in it. The TLR1 ha is a fixed width. We can't make this. We can't make this light smaller. The gap between the holster and the trigger is dictated by the. Here, let me get an overhead shot. By the size difference between the trigger guard and the ultimate width of this light. If you're using this light with a gun that has a really narrow trigger guard. Any holster you have is going to have a big gap in that area. Now, the other question is, should you care that you can uh, spend significant effort to get a finger into the holster and then uh, pull the trigger? What are you simulating by doing that is the question. It's important to keep things out of the holster when you're reholstering, when the gun is moving in the path that an obstacle would cause it to contact the trigger. But um, the nature of light bearing holsters is such that the aperture for the light to pass in and out of the holster will always be the width of the light. And the gap between, uh, the, the available gap between the uh, exterior of the holster and the trigger guard itself is dictated by the size difference between the trigger guard and the exterior body of this light. 
So if you had a trigger guard that was exactly the same width as the light, you would have no gap. If you're running this on a gun that's got a really narrow trigger guard, you're going to have more gap. Pay attention to how much gap there is before you get a holster and decide whether or not that light and gun combination is safe because the physics of holsters dictate that the gap has to be as wide as the light, otherwise it can't get in and out of the holster. Yeah, and also uh, just keep an eye on your drawstrings. If you're using the Enigma with like sweatpants or anything, just make sure that your drawstrings aren't hanging down on the inside of your pants uh, where there's a risk that they could uh, become involved in that process. So. Okay, so next question. Uh, will the new Express faceplate be offered as a standalone purchase? No. <laughs> and why not? <sighs> because we make it just for that holster, and the Express exists in order to offer people a fully pre-assembled solution. Um, the, the issue being that we guarantee Uh, a certain performance and a certain customer experience with these products. Once we start turning this into a kind of build your own Enigma from an entire selection of parts situation, the amount of like, oh, this is already really complicated. The Enigma is already really complicated. It's already, a, it's already a product that requires an enormous amount of support. It's a product that requires an enormous amount of education. And getting the most out of that product involves doing it all right and following all the instructions. We have reduced the complexity down to, you can get light-bearing and non-light-bearing versions of it, and you can get them assembled or pre-assembled. Or, or, or not pre-assembled, rather. Um, if we add an entire additional layer of complexity on top of that that involves mix and match different parts from different things, it's going to be a disaster. It's so much more complicated than it needs to be. The amount of pain that the customer is going to experience with the complexity is going to go through the roof. The amount of pain that we're going to experience on the service side of that is going to go through the roof. So for now, the simplest way to do this is you can either get a standard Enigma with all the parts you need to assemble it, you can get a light bearing Enigma with all the parts you need to assemble it, or you can get an Express that's fully pre-assembled or a light bearing Express that's fully pre-assembled. And anything more than that is going to be an absolute catastrophe for everyone involved. So we're not gonna do it. Okay, well that settles that. Next question, uh, will these, uh, where will these be available at launch um, aside from our own website? They're gonna be available at launch on our website and at Big Tech's Ordnance. And it's going to be Monday the 6th at 7 a.m. All right. That's pretty exciting. Okay. Let me go through a couple more comments here. I'm kind of falling behind. Um, let's see here. Uh, here's one from Facebook. So from Facebook, is it known if these will accommodate the emissary development shifter switches for X300? Uh, if the old floodlight did, these will too. All right. And let me see if I can track down. Oh, here we go. Uh, can you pre-order? No. All right. Nice and easy. Um, oh, here's a good one. Hang on. Does the rib geometry make it more difficult to get good attachment of the uh, Velcro loop to the shell for using a wedge cut? Nope. Sticks great. Great. Uh, let's see here. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play the launch video for anyone who may have missed it. And then while that's playing, I'm going to go through and check the Facebook comments and try to catch up a little bit because I'm totally overwhelmed back here.
And we're back. Oh, do you want me to talk a lot and fill some time? Yes, please. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, oh, what am I supposed to talk about if I don't have any questions? Uh, I think I've got most of them. Okay, so oh, 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 here, we, here, give me a good one. Give me one to. I got a good one for you. You're say it's complicated. I'm just gonna say no. <laughs> Can you make a one light like holster for the TLR7? Uh, why or why not? No. Okay, so for several reasons. One, the, the floodlight works because these two lights have a ton of surface area that you can grab onto, specifically the bezel uh, of the light. The TLR7 is so small that we can't build a universal holster around it because there's really not enough to grab onto and stabilize the whole thing. The other problem is, uh, this is going to get kind of philosophical for a second. So we got to backtrack considerably. We look like a holster company, but we're not. That's a weird thing to say, I know. We are a concealment technology company. And what you'll notice is that we don't have a really wide variety of fits for our products. We don't have, you know, the Enigma Express for two dozen different guns. You know, there are holster companies out there that have like 3,000 SKUs in their catalog, right? And what you'll notice that they do all the time is that they'll make a holster and then they'll make it for everything and it never goes obsolete. And then if they want to invent something new, First of all, they're bogged down in making holsters for every single thing on the planet. And then to invent something new, they have to invent it and then support all those guns all over again. And that other thing never goes obsolete. And then before you know it, you've got 3,000 SKUs in your catalog, multiple products that kind of compete with each other inside your own ecosystem. And then when you need to revise anything or make an advancement, you have to change all 3,000 of those SKUs. And we are way more interested in developing new technologies frequently and at a high iteration rate, which means that we're not going to have this huge battleship, this huge aircraft carrier full of SKUs that we need to figure out how to turn on a dime every time we come out with a new innovation. So we focus on bringing new concealment technologies to the world, and then we offer them for a limited number of things. The TLR7, not only doesn't have enough surface area to make this floodlight universal approach work, the other issue is that there's the TLR7A and then there's the TLR7 subs. And there's a ton of variation in that. There's a different sub for the uh, P365 than there is for the Glock 48. And there's variations within the TLR7A family. So before you know it, You've got to, we would have to, in order to make a, TL, a, a holster like this that fits the TLR7, we would have to make it fit three lights and five guns right off the bat, which means that this project, the project of injection molding a ComfortScape holster for even the top three most popular guns with a TLR7 turns into like a $175,000 to $200,000 project of which we will get almost none of that money back based on the overall popularity of the TLR7. And then on top of it, companies like Streamlight iterate lights like the TLR7 constantly. The advancement potential in the small body light area is so huge that by the time we get this project done for the TLR7, they'll have come out with a TLR14 that has, you know, a few more lumens and a different body shape that we can't work with. And then everyone who has a TLR7 will scrap that and get the 14 or the 19 or however many fucking TLRs they have. And we'll be behind the curve and out the money. The X300 and the TLR1 externally haven't changed in 10 years. On the outside, they're the same light because their form factor is such that all they need to do is change the internals 
to dramatically increase uh, candela and lumens and battery life. And so this is a stable product around which we can build uh, technologies to support. So stuff like the TLR7 just doesn't, doesn't fit into this world for us, unfortunately. All right, thank you. Okay. Did that kill enough time? Yes, that was great. So we've got a couple more questions and I think we can start wrapping up. Um, okay, so Brian asks, can you carry strong side IWB with forward cant if you use the DCC mod for standard hole spacing clips? I think those are the one with little... Um, uh, yeah, I think so. There's a little bit of cant adjustment there. Cool. Uh, yeah, and I, I think I've seen a picture of that, so it can be done, especially if you um, if you offset the clips so that um, you've got one clip in the higher hole and then you, you rotate them both. So yeah, you can do that. All right, uh, next up. Do we have a light bearing holster in the works for a P365XL size gun or to continue to suggest Henry for that size? I'll just answer that for John, for John to, to avoid his uh, blood pressure spike. Um, go to Henry Holsters, um, get the Henry Ember. It's an excellent holster, um, ambidextrous. You can get it pre-assembled with a light bearing Enigma and they are awesome. So uh, we still recommend those. All right, next, uh, like the original floodlight, uh, are there different lengths of shot cord for different thicknesses of guns? Yes. Okay, stop answering with a single word because then I have no time to get to the next question. Don't ask, ask me yes or no questions then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does come with two different lengths of uh, shot cord. All right. Uh, related question, could you use screws and uh, like a fixed uh, washer in replacement of the shock cord if you wanted? What does that get? What does that accomplish? If you only want to use it for one gun, um, it removes the, the flexibility of it. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really get you that much because it's in your pants anyway. Yeah. But theoretically, I guess. If, sure. I mean, you, you, you could, but uh, it doesn't really accomplish anything. Gotcha. Alrighty, next one is the new holster reversible, as in ambidextrous. Is. Yep. Yep. Same on each side, and it's uh, it's still slim. So even though it's ambidextrous, it doesn't have any added. Uh, really, like the whole thing is nice and smooth. So why don't you show it on your uh, boom up there, John? What? Why don't huh. you? There we go. All right. Let me just double check Facebook. I think we are caught up. All right. We should wrap it up by reminding people that these are on sale Monday morning at 7 a.m. Is that Eastern time? That is Eastern time. We're getting up early for everybody. All right. Oh, one more, one more. Okay, this one's good. So the TLR1 is slightly extended. Um, was this also done for the X300? Uh, ever so slightly. Will this autofocus here? Yes. Okay. So can you see in here? It's only about a quarter inch on the uh, X300 because we wanted to make sure that this was round and not sharp. So there's a little bit there. And we've also, I think you can see that we've put a little bit of a dome on the bezel so it's not flat. So we've rounded the whole thing. And there is a tiny bit of extra length. However, it really pays off in terms of comfort, I promise. And just to further answer that question, uh, I've been wearing it, which it is ridiculously oversized on my frame, um, but it's actually super comfortable. So I've been, I've been wearing it for about the last three weeks just for kicks. Um, and it's nice. Okay, one last question, and then we can be done. Okay, last one. Will the new floodlight leave wear marks on your gun like Kydex does? No. Are you sure? 
I'm positive. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess that is, that's it. Well, I mean, it depends on what you mean by wear marks. A lot of the wear marks that people see on their gun when using a Kydex holster is actually the Kydex coming off onto the gun, not wearing through the, rather than the finish of their gun wearing off. Like, so Kydex doesn't really wear the finish of your gun. You can scratch Kydex with, a, with your fingernail. How is your fingernail harder than like the melanite finish on a gun? It's not. Um, what happens, what most people see is wearing the finish is a lighter color Kydex or like, you know, black Kydex even looking gray on their slide. And most of the time when you see like, oh no, it's wearing the finish off, you can lick your finger and rub it down the slide and all the Kydex comes off. You can like clean it off with like hoppies or something. And it's not actually the finish. So the wear marks that most people see on their gun when using a properly constructed holster is actually the holster itself wearing off onto the gun rather than wearing through the finish of the gun. And since these uh, this material doesn't have the same properties as a Kydex, it's not going to wear off onto the gun. It's way tougher than that. Yeah, I will say one thing that will um, wear the finish of your gun is dirt. So if your holster's dirty and you're grinding it back and forth uh, against the gun you know, every day, that does add up over time. Um, but it's not the plastic that's scratching the gun. It's the, the dirt and the you know grit that gets in there. So keeping your stuff clean helps a lot with that. All right. All well, right. I want to thank people for watching, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Wow. Guys, I was super nervous about this. It's another weird-looking product that requires a ton of explanation, and everyone's going to go, oh, that looks super uncomfortable, and this and that and the other thing. I've been nervous about this for ages, but we knew it worked, and we pushed forward through it. And like the, the big challenge that we face routinely is having a crazy idea for something that looks totally weird, and we have done all the testing to ensure that it works way better than anything we were making before. And then trying to you know reconcile how do you explain how weird this thing looks compared to how, how well it works. But um, thank you for, for joining us and, and listening to me rant about the new product. And um, uh, thanks, for, thanks for putting up with my long-winded explanations about it. It's, it all goes towards what the, what the product's capabilities and, and, and functions are. And we're really excited to have been able to pack this much into one holster. They go live. Monday the 6th at 7 a.m. on our website, filsterholsters.com, and at Big Tech's Ordinance. Uh, so there's plenty to go around. We're going to have them with clips, with no clips, and with the new Light Bearing Enigma Express in all four awesome colors. And we really hope you give it a try and see what we've been up to for the last couple of years with this.